In this video, we're gonna talk about what? My bias, uh, Jenny Kim, Blackpink, do do do, Blinks Unite, what? Oh, research bias? That's way less cool. All right, let's do this. There's a lot of bad research out there. And in this video, we're gonna cover some of the most common research red flags. We're talking about bias in research. Up first is experimenter bias. And this happens when a person conducting an experiment somehow unknowingly influences the data. So let's pretend a person is doing research on memory and they shouldn't distract the participants. But our researcher ate some beans last night and now they've got some bad gas. Then while reading the instructions, they fart just loud enough to hear, but not so loud that they stop the experiment. Hearing a fart will affect the participant's ability to memorize things because they're distracted, and that will ruin the data in this study. Okay, in reality, this bias is usually more subtle, like a person's tone of voice could be distracting, and an easy way to fix this kind of experimenter bias is just to record the instructions. Another way experimenter bias can show up is when a researcher puts people into groups in a way that messes up the data. A way to prevent this is by doing a double-blind study. In a double-blind study, the group allocation is done in a way that even the researcher doesn't know who is in the experimental group and who's in their control group. Okay, up next we've got hindsight bias, also known as the I knew it all along phenomenon. It's the tendency to believe after an event has occurred that you would have accurately predicted the result before it happened. For example, before an election, many people aren't sure about what the outcome is going to be. But then after a new president takes office, they overestimate how confident they were before the results were in. They say, oh, I knew that they were gonna get elected, but they forget how uncertain they actually were before the election took place. They're suffering from hindsight bias. Okay, bias number three is confirmation bias. And this is what you get when you only pay attention to data that supports your ideas and you ignore data that would reject them. In other words, you only listen to the things that confirm your beliefs. And my favorite example of this bias comes from the Flat Earth Society. These people think the Earth is flat and they ignore all evidence that it is not. And this has prompted one angry man from Scotland to launch a GoFundMe page to send a flat earther into outer space. We must protect this man at all costs. Confirmation bias is very common and it's easy to commit it unknowingly. So scientists do their best to disprove their own theories. Okay, bias number four is social desirability bias. And this refers to the tendency of participants to give answers that they think other people will like rather than being honest. So this bias is most common in research studies that rely on self-report measures. For example, a person might say they dislike a controversial public figure, but in reality, they're a big fan of them. And as my own example of social desirability bias, I'm not gonna name any controversial figures because, you know, YouTube is, I can't let my channel die in unit one, right? So this is social desirability bias at work, just trying to look good. Another problem that we can get into in research that I briefly mentioned in a previous video is the Hawthorne effect. And this effect occurs when participants change their behavior when they're being observed. A good real life example of the Hawthorne effect is how students will behave differently when the principal walks in the room. And you know who else behaves differently then? Your teacher. When the principal walks in, it's nothing but A game. Oh. And a side note, a psychology teacher's worst fear is being observed when we teach about Freud. You'll figure that one out later. Okay, finally, we need to talk about the difference between reliability and validity in research. Reliability refers to the consistency of research findings. So a study is considered reliable if it gives you the same results when repeated under the same conditions. As an example, let's pretend I'm starting a restaurant. I need to find a good cook to run my kitchen. But remember, I'm bad at research. So I get a few candidates and to see who is the best cook, I make them do a push-up competition. Is this a reliable test? Yes, it actually is reliable because if I did it multiple times, the results would be pretty much the same. I'm using a reliable test to measure their upper body strength. Now I'm sure you're thinking this is a pretty bad idea and that's because you already understand the concept of validity. Push-ups are not a valid test of cooking ability. Validity is all about measuring what you're trying to measure. 
So a valid measure I could have my cooks do is have them make me some barbecue or something. For research to be good, we need to use research methods that are both valid and reliable. We're measuring what we want to measure, and if we repeat it under the same conditions, you get the same results. Okay, so that's a quick overview of some basic concepts related to bias in research. And in our next video, we're gonna look at statistics. Hearing a fart will affect the ability to... <laughs> um, all right, okay.